What's up, Robo Lawyer? The, we've been covering too much material in the last two weeks in corporate law. Well, I guess that's uh, just part of the course because there's a lot of important ideas which we need to cover. So we, it'll all come together later on. Uh, what you think? You think so, too much? Two pencil gold. Okay, let's have a look and see what we did. Now, week four, we looked at the internal governance of the companies, and we looked at the fact that there's a board of directors and a general meeting of members, and the board of directors generally has the day-to-day -day powers of the running of the company and engages management. But the general meeting members has certain powers which are reserved to that meeting. And one of the most important ones is the only way you can change the constitution of a company is by special resolution. And that's important. I also need to know what's meant by a company's constitution because, yes, that's right, Robo Lawyer. If the law's changed over the years, at one stage the constitution of the company was the memorandum and articles of association. But, and then they introduced the replaceable rules and the approval which allowed a company to choose what to have, whether they wanted just replaceable rules or some of their own rules and replaceable rules, or do they want to draft their own constitution. So there have been some changes there. And the other important thing to look at is what restrictions are there on what sort of decisions the general meeting of the company can make. We talked about those as a result of the Gambotto case where the general laws put up some rules about the members can't use their power to make certain decisions if it's going to uh, affect minority members in particular ways. The other thing is you notice that there are some statutory rules saying if they want to change the constitution and it's going to affect a particular class of shareholders, they have to have a separate meeting those shareholders and that special resolution has to be adopted at that stage. And what's that, Robo Murine? What's a special resolution? Well, a special resolution is one that requires more than a 50% majority. In fact, it requires a 75% majority. And there's got to be adequate notice given so people can decide whether to come along to a meeting and vote on it. That's right, in Chapter 7 of the textbook we looked at members' meetings and there is a provision for the meetings to be set aside if people think or the, uh, that something unfair has happened, they can apply to the court. The court may set it aside, it's fairly difficult though. Right, so they, that's probably the main thing to look at with this decision making, how meetings happen, and what those new words about proxies and polls, yes, you need to know what they are. And, uh, so, okay, what about these related tra party transactions? Well, <coughs> they also crop up in the next section when we talk about directors' duties, where there's con possible conflicts of interest with the directors and companies. So, uh, and in fact, the law tried to address that by requiring that the meetings of members approve those related party transactions. So if you can see, in certain situations to, occur, uh, to prevent directors breaching duties, the law imposes additional requirements. Uh, what's that, uh, pencil dog, how are you going to learn all this? Well, that's a good question because I wouldn't try to remember it all. I, I, I'd look for the big picture and then I'd tr see how it fits in. Like if you have a look at member decision making, look at the, the subheadings there and see 
what powers are given to the members of the decision, and what sort of decisions members can make. Look at the, look at it in a big uh, overall first of all, because in the exam, it, it's an open book exam. I think everybody knows that. You will be able to refer to the relevant sections of the book to clarify issues. So that's not going to be too much of a problem. We hope. Uh, certainly, you need to know about things like members' meetings. The restriction on how uh, for, uh, the decisions that the members can make, that's important as well. What's that, Robo Lawyer? Yes, uh, why are the rules so vague in places? Well, that's because they're the designed for a whole lot of companies, from the great big public companies right down to the single, uh, well, not quite single member proprietary companies, but proprietary companies, very few members, and sometimes you'll notice there are differences in the requirements for a public company and a proprietary company. So if you look at those particular headings and go through and say, I can see where that works, I can see how that fits in to the legislation and the general law, then I think it'll be a lot easier. The other thing to remember is when we, a lot of this material is all new to you. As we progress through the course, it will become clearer. So, you satisfied with that at the moment? Are you doing your assignments? I hope you are. I hope we all are. Well, look, I've got to go and finish this, turn this off now, I think, because I've got, uh, I'm using different cameras today because the microphone's not working, so I'll see how it goes. I'm going over to turn it off. You say goodbye, Robo Lawyer. Goodbye, Pencil Dog. Robo Mirror.